Prime subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're very lucky today, folks. Whenever I have a question that I can't get answered, I call someone that's going to be our guest today, and his name is Bill Meridian of Cycles Research out of Vienna, Austria. Bill, how are you doing? Well, I'm good, Larry. How are you? I'm very good. I have three questions here from our listeners yes. to start off. Could I start with those? Because yeah. I... This is a new system that we have here at TFNA, and it's called Discord. I know it's a strange name for a company, but it's actually a pretty good system, but it's not like the old den that we used to have where it was easy to put in charts. So whether we have charts or not to show, I don't know whether we'll be able to do that, but the questions that I have are pretty important. Bill, I've never, in my 62 years of being in these markets, my first trade was 1959, and I, I have never seen it this squirrely. I, I've been through the Cuban Missile Crisis, the, the crash of 87, you know, all the dot-com bubbles and stuff, a couple of assassinations, but my God, I've never seen anything crazy in the world that's going on. I mean, there's so many things that are that are, that are are going bad. I, I, is this astrologically what's supposed to be happening? Yes. <laughs> Can you speak? <laughs> Listen, Bill, don't expand on it if you don't want to. Why is it so bad, Bill? <laughs> oh, I, you know, I didn't really... I'll try to give you a brief explanation. I would have, I, I already, last time I was on, you know, I explained that, I think it was December 2020. And, um, wow, two years already? The details are in the year, I'm trying to remember now, I, um, we had an eclipse at zero cancer, eclipses at zero affect the whole world. Mm -hmm. Six months later, we had a jupiter saturn conjunction, which supposedly rules the political economic situation for the next 20 years. I think it may only be 10. But they were directly linked because the eclipse was at zero Cancer and the sun at the moment of the jupiter saturn conjunction was zero Capricorn. Mm -hmm. This means these are the world points. That means the energy affects everybody. And if you remember on Bloomberg, they were coming on saying, you know, we're all going to have to participate. We're all going to go through a change. And well, you know, COVID, you know, affected everyone. Um, slowdown in the economy is affecting everyone. But those are not friendly charts. And neither was the inauguration chart for the current administration. They're all very difficult. Mm -hmm. So that's the short answer. Okay, that's that's a good short answer. And the second question that someone's asked, and it's there from Tupelo, Mississippi, the home of Elvis Presley. And his question right. is, um, what uh, is there anything in the in the stars or cycles that you're looking at that would cause a crash type environment sometime in October or November of this year? Well, it's a good, a good question. First of all, I did a study. It's called the panic cycle. Most panics have occurred in years uh, in October and November of years ending in seven or eight. So yes, October and November have brought uh, crashes. I just have a funny feeling it's not right now. Mm -hmm. The market may go lower, but if you're looking for banks, Lehman Brothers uh, going out of business and things like that, I don't think it's right now. Okay, that's fair enough. That, that, that answers that question. And the third question is, um, how is the price, uh, w what is your feeling on the environment in Saudi Arabia? I know this is geopolitical, but it's an important question, I think, because we do to ask it. Uh, what is the geopolitical ramifications of Saudi Arabia, you know, not going along with uh, Mr. Biden, President Biden, you know, cutting, uh, you know, increasing production? Is that all part of a scenario that's working out in the Middle East, and I know that's one of your specialties because you lived there for so many years. Yeah, and uh, I just spoke to them last week, and well, they're they're not happy with uh, with the president, and 
you know, they're, uh, I think the feeling throughout the Middle East is, uh, you know, their major concern when I, I last spoke three and a half, well, it'll be three and a half years ago when I was there, last physically there and I sat with, you know, all these guys. When I, when I got there, I was 40. All these guys were 25. Now they're running the country. <laughs> I sat with the, the guy who's the minister of economics at his home. Yeah. And um, I said, what are your major concern, concerns? Well, Iran and fracking. And so I think they resent, they want American help and defense against Iran. And if they're not getting it, they're not happy. And so it's a sort of a, a double, you know, I mean, we could produce all the energy we need here and we could sink the price of oil, but we're holding it up. So um, they are arming themselves as fast as they can. And uh, they would appreciate support from the U.S. government against Iran and uh, other encroachments. Wow. Well, I can't believe it's been this long since you've had you on. I got three other questions here right off the bat. Is so, there is there a potential, you know, some of these are, you know, really far out, but, you know, this is what I'm reading. Uh, is there a potential for a Armageddon type war here that uh, President Biden mentioned uh, this week, a nuclear war in the future? Well, there's, uh, there's always a possibility of anything, but uh, is it going to, uh, I have done, uh, I have to, uh, review my work in that area because I'm not really up to speed. But all I can say is the horoscopes that I mentioned, uh, I meant, you know, I, you don't know what to say. In 2019, when I looked at it, I said, well, there's an increase in violence. I left it at that. I meant at all mm -hmm. levels. I mean, look at the streets. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> the, the streets yeah. uh, between nations, civil wars, things like that. Yeah. Uh, a nuclear, I don't think anybody really wants that. I wouldn't think so, but my goodness, you see it in the news so much now. It's scary what happens in Chicago, it's Philadelphia, happens. San Francisco, it's Los it's Angeles. I mean, your thing is there to scare you. That's yeah. it. You got that right. Yeah. Are you safe where you are there in New York? Are you all right? I mean, you're you're out I'm of that in, area. I mean, uh, no, I'm in uh, right at the moment. I'm in my home in Monroe, New Jersey, which is outside of Princeton. Oh, okay. Well, you're in a you're in a real nice area. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. One other question that we have here on the price of oil. Do you, do you think we've reached the price of oil's uh, peak at 125, or do you think we could possibly go higher? Well, I've got that in the presentation here, but I think the odds of it going higher are low because you're moving into the weak part of the year. Mm -hmm. And what uh, it's uh, very seasonal. Okay, since we can't post the charts, how about if you go ahead and talk about the charts and oh, then I've the got, folks... You can't see them because I've got them on the screen. Uh, they say that uh, he can see them. Well, let's just go ahead. Maybe maybe Al will tell me that I'm not able to see them, but uh, I... Well, I, he I, told me to start screen sharing, so I did. Oh, well, then let's fire away. Let's go. I, I can get those. Uh, lay, I can, they'll figure out how to, we're ready to go, Bill. Go ahead. Start out with number one. And when we come to the break, I'll, well, the break's coming up in just a, a few seconds here. But let's bring up the first chart and then I'll figure out how to. Uh, Got it up. Uh, I will. I will be able to see it very, very soon. So I think yes. all I have to do is to, uh, uh, I think I got it. So let's go ahead. Oh, well, now we got the, we have a commercial we'll now. Yeah, make some money. Yeah, yeah that's what we're going to do. We'll be right back, folks, with Bill Meridian Cycles Research. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, diverse partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, you want to take off on your first chart? Tell the folks okay. what we're looking at. We'll move to the second one. You see the summary? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I'm. The stock market, well, I'll talk about this is due in Q4, where we are. But the average bear market runs 30 to 33 months and retraces 38 to 50 percent of the prior bull market. We're not there yet. So the bulls are on thin ice here. Rates are headed higher, which means lower bonds. Oil, I think, is moving lower in this Q4. And the real estate cycle, which I presented on your show many times, I said 2023 would be the top. You or It's already creaking. You're beginning to see the, the fault lines. So always have to keep uh, our eye on the money supply. And you see here, the globe, this is the global money supply. It is contracting. So if uh, you're looking for an expansive money supply, you're looking for a reason to own some, some inflation hedge, it really, the facts do not support that. You are running up the down escalator. And <laughs> of course, credit is tightening. Percent of the world's banks hiking rates. I mean, you can see that is higher at any time since 1985. I have a bunch of slides like this. These are the only two I put in. Wow, this so, is incredible. Well, we can see it. Our mortgage rates hit 7% here in Tucson yeah. this week. Of course. Now, October, from 1885 to the present, in terms of the S&P, in all months, it's up 56% of the time. October is the single most volatile month. It is. It has seen the biggest one-day declines it has seen more lows and it usually closes on the upside. And according to the decennial pattern, in years ending in two, October has bottomed a lot of uh, bear markets. I don't know if it'll do it this year, but anyway, in years ending in two, which we're in, it's been up 31% of the time. In election, two years past an election, it's up 62% of the time. Both zero and elect, uh, zero, that should be two in election years, the combination of, of items two and three, up 67% of the time. Mm -hmm. The month has been the highest, it has the highest percentage return of 4.1%. It's been the most volatile month. So that's what we're facing right here. So usually, you know, very uh, choppy in the opening and closing on the upside. Now, the one, four and 10 year cycle, the one year cycle is the annual cycle in any year that the market is weak 
in the autumn. It is a strong in Q4. There's a spring rally and so on, a summer top. That is the red line. The election year cycle is the green line. That is a four-year cycle. It's actually 3.8 something, which has been attributed to the Federal Reserve. And the story goes that the Federal Reserve wants to support the incumbent president, so they juice up the money supply in the year before the election. So the year prior to the election, the market returns have been best. Uh, the year after, they've been the worst, and the other two in, are in between. That is a good theory, but as my old pal Ian Notley used to point out, there was a four-year cycle before the creation of the Federal Reserve in 1913, and there's a four-year cycle in countries where they have six-year election cycle or no, year election, no elections whatsoever. In other words, it's a four-year cycle. And the decennial pattern is from Edgar Lawrence Smith of Ameritrust Bank, and that is, you know, years ending in five have had the best returns. Years ending in zero have had the worst returns, and all manners and shades in between. And if you look here, you'll notice there it is. It's, it's bottoming right now. And this mm -hmm. is the sum of all those cycles up here, the solid blue line. So you see, according to this, we should have started bottoming two weeks ago. And what I'm seeing here is a very weak, I mean, the, the market can't really muster any support in my, uh, this, by the way, is a cycle I used in 2016 when I was ranked number one by Time of Digest. And then it didn't work as well. So I, I have other cycle that I used, 17, 18, 19, 20. And I noticed last year in 21, this one fit the scenario. So I decided to follow this one. And you'll note that it, it projected a very weak Q2 and Q3. And there you see the weak September right here. And it's been, uh, it's been very, it's been the best of the cycle combinations. It doesn't always work every year, but it's working right now. Now that's the composite of the three cycles in Q4. So you'll see we, we are currently down right here, where I have the pointer, just above October 10th. Mm -hmm. So the market is trying to bottom. The technical problem that I see is if you look at the new lows, new highs, new lows have been dwarfing new highs. It started to straighten out, and then it went back to the downside. And even on up days, you're getting more stocks making new lows than new highs. So that is not a positive signal. And so I'm sitting on a lot of cash waiting for some signal. Now, Q4, this is uh, the, this is all years, two years best in election that are also years ending in two. And you'll note there have only been six of them since 1885. You'll note, you see how weak September is? Mm -hmm. That's, that does not include uh, this past year. And then you'll note that October 4 is strong, uh, October and November, December are strong. But you'll note, so in other words, I confirmed the 1 4 10 year cycle with this. I said Q2 and Q3 would be the weakest, Q4 would be the strongest. So this is where we are now. This Very is good. a new screen. You have not seen this before. This is only the Dow 30. I got into the habit of looking at seasonality, in other words, which stocks traditionally do the best? For example, um, or worst in a month. The worst month to hold Apple is September. It's down 65% of the time. If Apple is down in August, which is what, which it was, it rises to 72%. Now, Larry, you're a trader. And if I told you, uh, Larry, I've got a, a trade here with a 72% probability of success, you would, I think, find that interesting. Anybody that'll flip a coin, I'll do it. You bet 75% is way out there. That's that's an outlier for me, and that's a good one. And October is the best month to hold it. So if you look right here, you see Apple, and you'll see seasonal rank three. In other words, of all these stocks, the best performer, the third best performer has been Apple. The best performer has been GS or Goldman Sachs. Uh, the second best performer, Johnson & Johnson. The RSV is the relative strength. So this is seasonality. This is what the market is currently doing. We look for confirmation. And relatively speaking, the number one stock is CVX Chevron Texaco down here. So if we, it normally does not do well. It's 28th ranked out of 30 stocks for October, but it's ranked first. So its rank is the sum of these two divided by two. 
So up at the top is Johnson & Johnson. It's number two in seasonal rank and number seven in relative strength. Now, I have been publishing, publishing this in Forbes. And in the past 30, 30 to 36 months, and this is not a managed portfolio, this is a test, but I put it out there. The numbers are that the top five stocks, if they are the longs, they outperform the index by about 30%, uh, the index being the Dow Jones Industrials. And the, the shorts are uh, running around like 0.6 a point. In other words, they're down 20%, 30%. So it's working exactly as a long short equity strategy would work. And it's got two components, seasonality and relative strength. Of course, you can look at this and go through the top five and say, I'm going to rule this one out or that one out for some other reason, because it's in a weak sector or whatever. So this is, I ran this for the month of November, which hasn't even started yet. So uh, I, I may have misspoken and said October, but for, and then I try to look for, notice J&J &J is a healthcare stock. Let's go down for and is United Health. So you've got two healthcare stocks highly rated. Then you have Merck over here. So of approximately the top 10, three are in the healthcare industry. And uh, of course, down at the bottom here, you've got Verizon, Boeing, Intel, uh, Dow, Nike, IBM. So these would be the shorts. So this is a tool I've developed just over the, I was doing it by hand and we finally computerized it because it showed merit. So now this is the S&P monthly and in 1987, the stock market crashed. I'm sitting in my apartment in Greenwich Village in New York and I called up Arthur Merrill, who wrote Behavior of Prices on Wall Street and Filtered Waves. And I said, Arthur, could this 1987 crash have been a, a mini bear market? And he said, well, Bill, there are two considerations, price and time. And if you ask me to pick between the two, I would say that price is more important than time. So I said, this has retraced X percent of the prior move up. So it could qualify as a mini bear market. Okay. So hey, Bill, this, we had yeah. we we got to go we sell to, things. Uh, yeah, we have to sell some things. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, this is really good. Stay with us, Bill. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV, live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, do you want to continue, please? This is really interesting to me, and I know the folks like so, it, too, so here's the please continue. Here's 100 monthly, so... Now these are, you know, obvious Fibonacci retracements, but on any chart, I've, I've kept this simple. I'll put on, you know, put on as much as you like. I put a regular trend line on uh, the GAN, you know, one by one, one by two lines. Where they, uh, Joe DiNapoli calls this confluence, where you see a high concentration of lines, it is thick ice for the bulls. In other words, if you walk out on the frozen lake, you're not going to go through into the drink. <laughs> so what's, what, what is that area here? Well, first of all, you've got this move from back here, 87 crash. Look, that 87 crash panicked us all. Look at the size of it now. I know. It was. 87. And then we start again here in uh, 2009. And then we over here in, uh, that's around um, 2019, 2020. So I picked 3030 30 because... Uh, 3,300. You'll notice it's 61.8 percent of the most recent rally and 38.2 percent of this rally. Mm -hmm. And if you go below that in an emergency all out, uh, 2,500 would be 50 percent retracement of the entire rally from the 2000 from the 1987 low. So 3,300 has been my target for a while, but obviously markets don't move straight down. They, uh, you have bear market rallies, which are devilishly difficult to catch and lose a lot of money for you. So <laughs> I find it hard to believe that uh, we're going to uh, have a strong market next year. I just think we're having a Q4 rally and you're this rally right now. I mean, I mean the, the S&P is right now off 11 cents as I'm talking. That's not much of a rally. But this is what I'm keeping my eyes on. I think this is one of the key charts to watch. And composite, didn't we just have that back here? Uh, anyway, I think I put this in here twice. Composite of the three cycles in Q4. Now let's move over to bonds. Now, first of all, um, I'm sorry, things are a bit out of place because I'm traveling and having computer problems. So bonds have hit a retracement level of 78.6 of this rally from 05 up to here and from 1982 to the high up in 2020 that is a 38.2 percent retracement it's right there mm -hmm. so as our my old friend um Uh, Tony, I forget, Tony Plummer in England says. Yeah, it's Elliot it, Mann of uh, England. Yes, you betcha. Yeah, if it exceeds 38.2%, that usually means some fundamental has changed. In mm -hmm. other words, the investor's view of the fundamentals has changed. The, the fundamentals may have also actually changed. But if it violates 38.2%, it tells you that the previous trend is, may not be valid or it's weakening. So right here, I'm just saying that... Uh, uh, I'm very negative. I'm very bearish on bonds. But right here, you may get a bit of a bounce. And uh, this is in the wrong place. Okay, let me see if I can get back to bonds. Here we are. Sorry about this, folks. It's okay. But, you're doing great, buddy. Well, uh, here we are seasonally. Here we are in October. This is 40 years. The uh, red is the probability of a rise on that day or time period. So here, January, we read the right scale. That's almost 70% chance of a rise in the month of January. But look what it drops down to in March. That's about a 30% chance. Mm -hmm. So from here to here, if you're a bond bull, you're swimming upstream, you're climbing up the down escalator, 
uh, you're eating soup with a fork, and uh, <laughs> then you, you buy the low here and you hold up until here. I said to the late Richard Mogi, Richard, is it my imagination or when you're looking at a new market with cycles, you should start with the annual cycle of the year. He said, yes, Bill, that's what I have found. And so this is the annual cycle of the year. And you know, July and August were the best months. October is up slightly. And then November, and then it weakens. You'll notice you sort of hit the peak up here. You're sort of swimming upstream here. But this is working against this. This is the U.S. national deck. Uh. And the little arrow is 1972. And interest on that has to be paid. So I have I had a boss. I've had very good uh, people around me all during my life. And he said, the longer term you go, the more the fundamentals play a part. He said, so the shorter term, it's supply demand imbalances. You measure that with technical and market analysis. So he said, now everybody tell me what's going to happen in two to three years, and I'll give you the ideal investment strategy. So, uh, you know, whether you're doing fundamentals or technicals, you're still in the same boat. You want to know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that is the composite cycle, which I think you have seen before. That is my program, which extracts the cycles using spectral analysis, but then mm -hmm. tests them, which I don't think any other software uh, program does. I, I, it, it runs a buy and sell signal test. Well, if, uh, if that's the amount of debt, mm -hmm. and that's the seasonality, and that's the dynamic cycle, in other words, that's all the cycles on a monthly basis mm -hmm. that are currently active, and making money. Uh, so we just don't look at the one-year cycle, which is the annual cycle. We look at all. This is the vacuum cleaner, or as they say in Europe, the Hoover, that hoovers up all the other cycles. So you put the two of them together, and you're off to a pretty good start. Let me just see what the next slide. Okay, I want to go back now. This, I'm sorry for this being out of... Oh, yeah, you're doing great. I remember the last time you were on, or very close to the last time, you were very negative bonds and thought that gold was going to have a... A significant correction over the next year or so, and you've certainly been right on both of those. So keep on going; you're moving great. Hey, uh, we got a bill. We got bills to pay here in just a few minutes, but keep going yeah. until we hear the music, and then we'll. Okay, let me get back here. This is a book I wrote, Planetary Economic Forecasting, which I wrote in the early '90s. Okay, Bill. Here's some. We got to pay the bills now. We'll be back in just about two minutes. Okay, Bill Meridian, folks. Cycles Research. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. You will tell us about this book, Bill. We'd like to hear about it. Yeah, well, Planetary Economic Forecasting was written back in the 90s, and I, I took the business activity index from Ameritrust Bank. Where they took every stitch of economic data they could find from, I think it was 1780 up till the present. Uh, I... Uh, they were taking, taken over, I think, in 88, and the first thing you do is you fire all the creative people who do this. And so <laughs> I've been maintaining the numbers myself ever since. And so I tested planetary cycles out. Six showed great promise. The major one is Jupiter going through the signs, which is a 12-year cycle. That was way ahead of whatever was in second place. And I don't have the chart here, but it very clearly showed the 2007-8 top, which was the real estate bubble. Then it showed a flat market for eight years, and I was in London explaining this, and some white-haired gent who is a walking history book on economics and history said, uh, well, why would the economy remain, remain flat for eight years? And thinking on my feet, I said, they'll elect someone like the Carter administration that's not friendly to business, which is what happened. And in 2016, it took off. And so I predicted whoever won, there was going to be a rally. So the uh, you know back when we initially did this, you know, I ran the projections to 2020 and not any further, unfortunately, but I figured out a way to get them out. Now, that is 2022. And we are right now, uh, where are we? are over here. So this is all the news you've been hearing about uh, weakness in the economy. And this is business activity. So it's anything that Ameritrust could find, and they stitched it together, and it's a long explanation. It was stock averages. And since 19, it's the end of the uh, World War II, it's the FRB index of industrial production fed into a regression analysis. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's what the numbers are. And this is 2023, so it indicates actually um, things ain't that bad in the economy. I don't know if I really trust the cycles, but they, they haven't failed yet. But this is 2024. Now, the odd thing is I was speaking to... Um, Felix Zuloff, who was the most successful fund manager in Europe, and by going long technology, and he used to come to Abu Dhabi, used to come to my place, and so I always like to compare notes. And he, when I last spoke to him, he said he thinks the real trouble is coming in 2024. Well, that's what this chart says, because that's a steep decline for this, uh, this uh, index. And that is 2025, so it indicates from Q1 of 2024 to sort of Q3 to 2025, a sharp drop in industrial product in uh, business activity is the proper term. So a lot of people have asked me to update that. So that's the updating. So now we go to gold. And as you can see here, the gold dynamic cycle bottoms. Now, let me first say that se September is the single best month to hold gold. It's up 61% of the time. And this cycle actually uh, pointed up at that time. And I went long gold and got, I mean, there was a 70% chance of gold going higher, and it did not. So that tells me there's something fundamentally very wrong with gold. So now I'll tell you a story of some guys in New York that I knew who had a currency trading program. And they, in the very early days of um, social media and um, 
that, well, they went to news feeds and they hired a PhD in linguistics. And they said, take words like, you know, buy the pound or sell, uh, sell the yen and search for those and that effort failed. So finally, before they gave up, they used, I think they used a test called multiple discriminant analysis. So they said, go to highs and lows and just figure out what the words were, whether they make logical sense or not. That worked. And those guys had a very successful currency trading operation that was super secret. When the euro was introduced, it fell apart. Now, I think gold is having trouble for two reasons. One is cryptocurrencies, that a lot of the money that would normally go into gold is going into crypto. And number two is the strength in the U.S. dollar, which I'll get to. So this, and there is the gold seasonality. See, as you can see, it declined in September, which is very rare. And uh, right now, we're in this period. So we may have, I think, a strong finish here, November, December to the year, year but I'm not too bullish. I think, a, uh, and I'll just get into Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency for a minute. Before he passed away, Matthew Mellon and I met from the Mellon banking family. and we, we met three times, and he was the backer of Bitcoin. And he said, I'm you know, tired of these guys, and get, besides I'm getting out of this. The government has contacted me, and they want to create a government coin, and they want me to help them. Well, as you know, the current administration has already issued plans to do so. And uh, globally, they want to do this. And I said, aha, that's the fundamental. That's why, that's why Bitcoin and cryptos aren't going anywhere. When the government comes in, it's like a big fat Uncle Sam diving into a swimming pool. There's going to be a huge wave. And all the little, <laughs> all the little cryptocurrencies will sink. Like they used to have so many car companies, Studebaker, Duesenberg. Oh, yeah. And uh, I said, if the government comes in, what they'll do is they'll offer you some kind of an incentive. Like, we'll give you a quarter of a percent off your tax bill if you pay it with our GovCoin. Well, my client came in Friday night from the Bahamas. We had dinner in New York. And I said, what's going on in the Bahamas? And he said, well, do you remember what you said about uh, the words I just said? I told him. He said, in the Bahamas, you can pay with the U.S. dollar, the Bahamian dollar, or a local government currency, and you'll get a discount if you use the local government currency. Now, if the U.S. government did that, Bitcoin, I think, and Ethereum would survive, but all the little ones will get sunk. And they also probably will hit them with a lot of regulations that a lot of them, the smaller ones can't afford. So that is why Bitcoin is flat as a pancake. And in Tony Plummer uh, analysis, it couldn't even retrace 38.2% of the last loss. So I'm not a buyer right here. Okay. And wow. Here's oil. You can see the seasonality. We're in October. Look at this. So it's up. Let's read the right schedule. 42% of the time. Next month, it's 38%. The blue is the average percentage change, which is losses of about 2 and 3%. And the green is the product of the two. So... You're sailing into a headwind here if, it's, if uh, you're looking at oil. Now, the daily histogram for oil this month, and I'm now I'm pounding the table here. In the second half of the month, look at that. That's how, in the month of October, that's how weak oil is, and particularly the 19th and the 22nd. So I went bearish because it was a projected turning point on oil on Friday, and I doubt I'm going to come off of that till the end of the month. Wow, this, you hit it right on the high. It closed on the high on Friday. Well, and now why is gold having so much trouble? Well, if this is this a contrary opinion signal? This is from... <laughs> oh, boy. <this> <laughs> well, I have... Um, you'll see why. You have, you, when you do this, you have to... Uh, when you get into it, you know, you buy the technical analysis book, you go to the course or whatever, and you think you've got the grandmaster key to forecasting the markets, and then you start working and realizing by the time you're done, half of them point up and half of them point down, and you're back, sort of back where you started. Yeah. So this looks very bullish, and this is the U.S. dollar seasonality. You'll notice we're in October, which is kind of flat, November, but look at December, and then look at January. This is a real flip-flop here from a very bearish December to a bullish January. Wow. Bill, we've got to, we got to pay a few bills, and someone's asked a question already. Which currency would you move to? We'll be right back with Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. Two minutes.
Vesta Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back speaking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, a question from one of our listeners is, if the dollar is going to top up in here, which currency would you go to? Well, let me finish the presentation. I think that will answer the question. I will be so quiet. The, uh, the major graph I'm looking at is this from the Foundation for the Study of Cycles, which down here where I have the pointer, I ran those cycles that come from my software on a monthly basis, and it showed a rally. I said, well, if it rallies, it's going to break this trend line. So that's what I predicted. Once it got up here, it got overbought. And as we all know, after a major breakout, you get a consolidation. And you see the consolidation, then the cycles turned up. I said, well, it's going to break out over here. Well, that uh, that counts up to about 115, 120. We're not there yet. So I think we've got to get up there. So the uh, let me see. Is there's the, there's the U.S. dollar cycle. That's the current cycle. And it doesn't top until sometime later next year. Now, I was on the phone with Felix in Switzerland, and he said, well, Bill, do you know where the dollar is so strong? And as we both know, it's the reserve currency of the world. So if you want to trade with someone else, you've got to convert your currency, whatever it is, into dollars in order to trade. That's what holds the dollar up. It creates an artificial demand for the dollar. But he said the reason it's so strong is the economy is slowing and people want to borrow money. Look at interest rates. And he said, so it's loan demand, and the loans are denominated in dollars. And he said, fundamentally, I don't see this stopping until sometime later next year, which is what my cycle says. So that's what's behind this. It's um, 
loan demand because people want to stay afloat and the economy is slowing. And so the answer to the question is, I would stay with the dollar. I would not try to trade off into another currency because I, mm-hmm. this cycle has worked all year long and people have been arguing with me since 2019 about this. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> See, I was looking at this. Yeah. I was looking at this as I'm thinking, well, um, if they ask you what the dollar is, is bullish or bearish, say bullish. Just think of this graph. And so that's the dollar index. Well, yes. that's it. Hey, buddy, we're going to have you on again in a couple of weeks. Okay, Bill? Thank you yeah, so look, much, my friend. Look at how trading cards have done versus the market. Oh, my God. Okay, thanks, buddy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.